We will now describe a generalized case of the situation shown in figure A, which is drawn again here, with the top gate in the middle, selectively reflecting innermost edge channels. But now we assume that we have a number n max of edge channels along the, the edge in the bulk of the sample far from the top gate, and that under the top gate, n min edge channels are transmitted. So that here along the top gate, n max minus n min modes are transmitted to the other side of the whole bar. Again, we write down the transmission matrix. And first we know that the current is just as before. We have plus i at contact 1 and minus i at contact 4 and everything else is 0. And now we again count modes at each contact. So at 1 we have n max leaving. and n max incoming from contact 6. At 2 also n max and n max. Now at 3 we have to pay attention to what is happening. We have n max modes transmitted from 3, n min are coming from 2, and n max minus n min from 5. So we write all this down 0 from 1, then n min. n max going to 4. and n max minus n min from 5. So from 4 nothing. And n max minus n min from 5. So I write n min minus n max. Contact 4, again a simple situation. With n max leaving and incoming. Contact 5 also simple. And at contact 6, the situation is similar to 3 with n max supported by contact 6. n max minus n min from 2 n min from 5 and no other contributions to the transmission matrix so here I complete the zeros and we have the full transmission matrix. So now we have to, sol to solve this, this linear system of equations. There are many ways to proceed. One could systematically invert the mat matrix, but let's write down a few equations that will be useful that we can read from here. So let's take the lines with zero current. 
and if you look here and here you can see that we read that v1 is equal to v2 and that v4 is equal to v5 so let's write a few equations as said v1 and v2 are equal and so are v4 and v5 Now the equations relating current to voltage can be read from the first row and the fourth one. From the first we see that I is equal to E square over H times N max times V1 minus V6. And this is also equal to i times uh, to, to e square over h times n max times v three minus v four. Now the third and the sixth row give us equations that are a little more complicated. From the third we, read, we can read that 0 is equal to so minus n min times v2 plus n max times v3 Then we have this n min minus n max times v5 and that's all and I call this equation star as I will refer to it later. Now the last one we need is what we get from this row we have read that what sums up to zero is n min minus n max times v2 minus n min times v5 plus n max times v6 and I call this double star Let us now try to calculate the interesting voltages in an efficient way. We start with the whole voltages. So we have V2 minus V6 to consider and V3 minus V5. And First, by adding those two equations, star and double star, we can easily see that the two whole voltages are equal. In fact, if you add this, all the terms containing n min will cancel out, and we are left with v2 minus v6 equal to v3 minus v5. So we already have found that the whole voltage will, the two whole voltages that we can measure will be equal for all possible values of n min and n max. Now let's get the numbers. V2 minus V6 can be calculated by using the fact that V2 is equal to V1. So this is minus V6. And V1 minus V6 appears here, so that we are able to read the whole voltage from this line. It's simply H over N max times E square. We 
which is the same as what we expect when no gate is present. Now let's continue with the longitudinal voltages between 2 and 3 and 6 and 5. So let's start with the longitudinal voltage V2 minus V3. And one way to find it is to use the equation star. And we do the following trick where we expand it. So we have n min V2 from here and we insert and min v3 minus and min v3, which is zero. Then we continue with what we have and max times v3. And then this term is left. Now it is possible to collect V2 minus V3, which is then simply multiplied by N min, and solve for V2 minus V3. If we do this, we will get an expression where the whole voltage appears. In fact, if you do the full calculation, you will see that it's N max minus N min over n min, which comes from here, times v3 minus v5. And this is the whole voltage we have just calculated. So that here we are left with n max minus n min over n mean times n max times i times h over e square. Let's now continue with the other longitudinal voltage, v6 minus v5. And here, one possibility is to use this double star equation and proceed in a similar way. So the terms from double star are n min minus n max times v2 minus n min times v5 and we extend with n max v5 minus n max v5 and then we also have a term plus n max v6 left and Again, here you can solve for V6 minus V5. And you find exactly the same relationship to the same relation to the whole voltage now appearing as V2 minus V6. So that we obtain here 
exactly the same voltage. So again we conclude that the two longitudinal voltages and resistances are the same and they are equal to an expression that you have already seen. It's 1 over n min. In fact, this fraction here, you can separate it as 1 over n min minus 1 over n max times h over e square. And this is the result that you have seen in exercise sheet number 2. where you have solved the general problem of the resistance of a conductor supporting M modes between contacts supporting M modes. Here M, so here the one is N max and the other is N min and we obtain the same, re same result and in fact we have the same situation. We can now continue and what is left to calculate is the two terminal resistance measured between 1 and 4 and the two diagonals 2 and 5, 3 and 6 and before we have seen that the result is not the same for the two diagonals now with the general n min and n max we can understand what is really happening there let's start with the two terminal and we will quickly see that it's the same as this diagonal here. In fact, let's write it down. So, two terminal and one diagonal. The two terminal resistance corresponds to the voltage V1 minus V4. And now looking at the two first equations we have, we see that V1 is V2, V4 is V5, so that this is V2 minus V5, this diagonal voltage here. And um, to calculate it, one possibility is to rearrange the terms of equation star so that we have 0 equal to n min multiplying v5 minus v2 plus n max times v3 minus v5 these are the same, same terms we see here and now again the whole voltage has appeared v3 minus v5 is the whole voltage that we know, so that we can solve for v2 minus v5, which is n max over n min times v3 minus v5. And this here, we know it, it's i times h over n max times e square, so that effectively we replace n max by n min, and we are left with the observation that our two terminal is equal to is one diagonal resistance n is equal to h over n min times e square now let's just quickly calculate the last missing 
resistance that uh, is interesting to us, namely the other diagonal resistance between 3 and 6. And here I will just give you the result and tell you how you can get there. So one possibility is to take the difference between star and double star. And again, we you will end up with an equation where V2 minus V5 appears. It's exactly the same uh, little technique as before. And you observe that R1, 4, 3, 6, so this other diagonal resistance, is equal to 2 over N max minus 1 over n min times h over e squared. And here the 2 appears when you subtract this from this you get 2 times minus n min times v2. So let's see what we found. As before the two diagonal resistances are not the same. And before we had the case n max equal 2 and min equal 1, where this diagonal resistance happens to be 0, but it can be non zero. And well, in fact, you can also avoid this calculation and calculate the diagonal resistance from the longitudinal and the whole one by simply summing voltages. V25 is the longitudinal resistance plus the whole resistance and 3 6 is the whole resistance minus the longitudinal resistance you can check this by simply adding up those formulas here so if you study a sample where you have a whole bar structure and in the middle of the whole bar some nanostructure that you want to study in which the electron density will typically be lower than in the bulk so that the effective feeling factor you have in the middle is smaller and you have exactly the situation here. If you want to study n-min, the only formula where n-min appears alone is the one for the two terminal and this one diagonal resistance. If you do a two terminal uh, measurement in a realistic setup, you will also have your cabling at the terminals so that you will measure the resistance of your cabling. And you may want to avoid this. And if you want to do a four terminal measurement in which you only have n min appearing, you have to use this diagonal here. So you have to pay attention to the direction of your edge channels, which means the direction of your V field, so that you do not measure the other diagonal where you will see a mix of n max and n min.